Hi, I'm Martha Arrington, fundraising consultant here at Square One Art. As you know, it starts with the art. And as a former art teacher myself, I have some great tips and tricks that I'd like to share with you to help you create vibrant artwork that sells. When you start your artwork, you wanna make sure that you fill out the informational header at the top of the paper. Make sure it's filled out legibly and completely. Then you'll begin the artwork here in the art space. Some of my favorite mediums are tempera paint, markers, and crayons. Those work really well when they are reproduced on keepsakes. Another tip is to make sure that color fills up the entire art space. So let me start with an artwork that maybe isn't there yet. Here's an example of a student who left a lot of white space. They used crayons um, to color here at the top and the bottom. Unfortunately, the crayon color they chose here in the middle is really light and it's not gonna reproduce well. This is getting a little bit better. The student has at least covered the pencil line with a marker so that we can see the drawing a little bit better. But unfortunately, there's still too much white space left. While I love this snowman, it's just not colorful enough. It would have been great if the student would have filled the background here with some blue, or maybe even purple if the sun is setting. This is getting much better. Lots of color. The subject in the middle is big and in the center of the paper. Um, and they certainly have filled the area, but it still has white spaces. So have your students completely color the background. This is a great example of using crayon. Um, again, you don't have to have expensive materials to create artworks for our lesson plans or for our fundraiser. I would only suggest that the student do two things. Maybe next time color harder with the crayon and also make sure that the student signs their name. Also, we like to have the year that the artwork is created. Here's an example of a lesson that used paint. Watercolor is great to use on our paper. It's, we have 80 pound paper, and so it holds wet media very well. They've done a nice, clear drawing in the center. They've outlined or covered their pencil line with Sharpie markers, and then filled the entire area with color. This is an excellent example of an artwork uh, that's going to reproduce phenomenally on our products. The student has filled the paper completely. They've just used markers for this. Again, a very cheap um, material to use that reproduces wonderfully. And finally, here is a phenomenal example of an art lesson. And this student has drawn the subject large and in the middle of the paper. They've outlined or covered over their pencil lines with Sharpie, and then they've painted every part of the paper so that there are no white spaces left. Another tip you might want to think about is to have students place their artwork against one side of your classroom, and then to have the student walk to the other side. If they can see their imagery, their composition from the other side of the classroom, and it's clear, then that's probably gonna be an excellent artwork to reproduce. So again, my favorite mediums to use are paint, specifically watercolor and tempera paint, crayons, oil pastels. Yes, I know they're messy, but they still reproduce wonderfully. And then the other option is paper collage. As long as it's flat and nothing is three-dimensional, cut paper, especially construction paper, reproduces wonderfully. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and tricks that I've shared with you. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to contact your fundraising consultant directly.